Sarawak will be the world's largest producer of hydrogen in the year 2028, which is just three years away. So first of all, is it even possible? And what about the geopolitical impacts? So let's find out. By the way, feel free to skip to the parts that you want to watch in this video and do not forget to subscribe for more content like this. First of all, hydrogen is called the fuel of the future. Sarawak is about to export hydrogen to Singapore. Not in gas, not in liquid, but in solid form. Stored in metallic hydride. And this sounds very complicated, but it's actually a breakthrough that could shape the future energy and geopolitics in South Asia. To be simple, hydrogen is a clean fuel. When you use it, the only emission is water, no carbon dioxide, no smoke. And that's why countries around the world, from Germany to Japan, are racing to build hydrogen economy. The problem is that hydrogen is not easy to store or transport. It is the smallest molecule and it leaks easily. It's flammable and it usually needs to be compressed to 700 bar pressure or cooled down to minus 253 degrees Celsius to become liquid. Both options are expensive and of course risky. This is where Sarawak innovation comes in. Instead of storing hydrogen as a gas or liquid, they are storing in a solid form using magnesium hydride. So here's how it works. At the Daru Hana hydrogen plant in Kuching, green hydrogen is produced through electrolysis. That means that they take water, H2O, and split into hydrogen and oxygen using electricity from hydropower. Since Sarawak has abundance of renewable energy and hydroelectricity, this makes hydrogen green unlike hydrogen made of fossil fuel. Once the hydrogen is produced, it is not left as a gas. It's absorbed into a special metal alloy. In this case, it's called magnesium. The hydrogen atoms fits into the empty spaces in the metal crystal structure, forming what scientists call a metallic hydride. You can think of like a sponge soaking out waters, but here's the case. The sponge is made of magnesium, and instead of water, it soaks out hydrogen. So why is it important? Because when hydrogen is locked into a metal hydride, it becomes stable and safe. You don't need high pressure and extra cooling. The hydrogen is basically sitting inside the metal until you need it. So when it's time to use it, you heat the hydride slightly and the hydrogen is released through a process called dehydrogenation. This makes storage and transportation much easier. That's why Hydrexia has designed reusable container called MHX units that carry these solid hydrogen blocks that can be shipped at normal temperatures and pressure, meeting the higher standards or I would say as higher safety standards. Once these containers arrive in Singapore, the hydrogen is released and converted into liquid hydrogen or used direct in fuel cell. This is the pilot export project that will start very soon. Now let's talk about why exporting to Singapore. Because Singapore doesn't have land or natural resources, it has a massive energy demand and a strong commitment for green energy. By importing hydrogen from Sarawak, Singapore can decarbonize its industry, transport, and maybe even its power plants into the future. For Sarawak, this creates an immediate export market, turning what was once called a domestic project into an international business. And here's a real story. And it's not about economics, it's about geopolitics. Hydrogen becomes a new oil in the 21st century. Countries that can produce and export hydrogen will hold influence in global energy markets. Just as the Middle East shaped geopolitics through oil, hydrogen-rich nations can become a new energy powers. Sarawak is making sure that Malaysia does not miss this opportunity. Sarawak could be producing 240,000 tons for free hydrogen annually by the year 2028. And that's only three years away. If it succeeded, Sarawak could become one of the largest green hydrogen hubs in the world. And this changes Sarawak's position in South Asia. Right now, Indonesia is betting on nickel and EV batteries. Vietnam is building up solar and winds. But Malaysia through Sarawak is carving out its place in hydrogen. This gives Malaysia a new anchor in regional geopolitics. It's not just about competing with neighbors in palm oil and semiconductors. It's about leading in the future energy markets that could be worth trillion of dollars globally. Let's talk about Malaysia. For Sarawak, exporting hydrogen strengthens its political and economic importance in the federation. Unlike fossil fuels, hydrogen aligns with global net zero targets, meaning Sarawak will be seen as a responsible, forward-looking energy producer. Of course, there are challenges. Electrolysis is a very expensive process. Even with hydropower, green hydrogen costs more than fossil fuel. With AI and automation improving efficiency, Sarawak will ride this wave and make hydrogen affordable sooner than expected. So what does this mean geopolitically? For Singapore, it reduces dependence on LEG imports from Middle East. For Malaysia, it builds cooperation with Singapore in a green economy in 
instead of just rivaling. For Sarawak, it built partnerships with Japan, Korea, and even Europe. It shows South Asia can play a leadership role in the future energy, not just as consumers, but as exporter. And that's why this first export of solid hydrogen is much more than technical pilot project. So when we hear how Sarawak is sending metal hydride containers of hydrogen to Singapore, it is not just about business, it is about the future balance of power in energy, and Sarawak wants to be on the table. Thanks for watching. And I want to think about this. I want to think about Sarawak's position in hydrogen energy. Please leave a comment down below and do not forget to subscribe if you like the content like this. And see you in the next video. Bye.